dear participants continuing our discussion on multi criteria decision making for natural resource management in part 3 we will discuss about the techniques for order performance by similarity to ideal solutions and this technique in brief it is known as topsis method if you recall at the introductory lecture of mcda i have mentioned about couple of techniques of mcda and topsis is one of them the full form of topsis as you see here technique for order performance by similarity to ideal solution little long name but topsis is easy to remember what is topsy technique topsy technique is a multiple criteria method okay which helps to identify solutions from a finite set of alternatives means where your alternatives are known certain numbers say you know 6 8 10 finite numbers in topsy the basic principle is that the best alternative should have the shortest distance from the ideal solution means the alternatives which brings you very close to the ideal solutions and the farthest distance from the negative ideal solutions all right so suppose you have here the scale this is your best solution and this is your worst solutions you are here at the zero line so topsis allows you to reach as close as the absolute base solutions so you go closer means you go far away from your worst alternatives or choice okay so that is what is telling now topsis procedures it uh, begins with the calculation of the normalized decision matrix you remember we discussed about various normalization process log based addition multiplication based right so here topsis procedure it starts with the calculation of the normalized decision matrix that is your q is equal to qij multiplied by m and n so this normalized decision matrix by normalizing the values of the ith alternatives and jth criteria by vector normalization how you do that this is the process qij equal to xij by summation of xij1 i to n so where qij is the normalized value of the jth criteria and ith alternative you remember no c1 c2 cn criteria and then you have a1 a2 eth n so this is your ith means i can be is equal to 1 to n and for criteria j criteria this also can be j is equal to 1 to n all right so qij is the normalized value of the jth criteria for the ith alternative after you do the calculation of the normalized decision matrix the best alternative or you can say the ideal solution which we call as v plus this is the ideal solution this is the worst solution v plus and the worst alternatives negative solutions you compute by this and this equation okay where v plus means the positive base solution is a summation of v1 to vn okay and then you have for v negative similar way you have v1 minus v2 minus vm all the you know negative value this side and this is the positive side so here on the basis of normalized decision matrix you calculate the v plus and the v minus so if your v plus value is closer to the base solutions then it will be definitely much away from the worst solution right both way you can explain this where j1 is a set of indices of the beneficial criteria again you recall we discussed in previous lecture beneficial criteria right and not beneficial criteria j2 is a set of indices which are non beneficial criteria and vij 
is the element of the weighted normalized decision matrix and you calculate Vij in this way. Now, the elucidian distance of every feasible solution from the positive ideal solution means this is your positive ideal solution which is you can express as d i plus and the negative ideal solution d i minus. These two again is calculated by this formula and this formula. I am afraid you have to actually recall these formulas when you actually calculate this kind of uh, in topsis this kind of matrices and then you try to find out the different solution options. The relative degree of approximation in topsis method is determined by this formula P i is equal to d i minus means the negative or the negative ideal solution d i plus is the positive or good solutions. So, d i minus by d i plus plus d i minus okay, where P i values range between 1 and 0 and i is equal to 1 to n. Now, topsis sometime may suffer some rank reversal problem. You get a suppose a rank okay, higher value to suppose lower value, okay. but topsis in case of topsis sometime we suffer rank reversal. So, that means lower one comes up, upper one goes down. What happens is that in this problem the alternatives orders of preferences changes as I said this will go up and this may come down. When an alternative is added to or removed from the decision problem, remember this. In topsis method your ranking may totally go up or down, this bottom one can go up and upper one can come bottom most. When it could happen? When you add another alternative or you remove it from the sets of alternatives during the decision making process. Okay. Suppose you have in hand alternative A 1 to A n, suddenly you decide that okay, I will remove this A 3 alternative or you decide that you want to add another alternative A n plus 1. So, you this kind of situation may happen that your, your order totally could change. Suppose you on the basis of value, suppose this is your you know 80, then 70, 65, 55 and suppose say 42, you range in like this way, enter this value might change and you can see that, that your this alternative suppose A 6 will go up there, the ranking would be totally reversal. So, that definitely would create a problem. Let us try to see with some simple example, um, this might help us to understand this particular method topsis. Again I will take the same kind of example, suppose in an agriculture practice there are 6 different you know precision farming technologies are adopted, 4 different criteria C 1 to C 4 are enlisted in the below table as you see here C 1, C 2, C 3 and C 4. Okay. Based on those criteria, we have to now determine which technology is most suitable. This is your technology option, 6 technology options. Now, in the criteria, we have these values weightage assigned. Okay. Now, let us see that how we actually complete the topsis method. Here in this table, as you see, on the left side, these are the technology options and then on the top you have the criteria. Okay. Now, C 1 and C 2 are suppose non beneficial criteria and C 3 and C 4 beneficial criteria. Okay. C 1, C 2 non beneficial, C 3, C 4 suppose beneficial criteria. Then what happens? You go for normalized decision variable matrix same way that we discussed in the previous lecture. But here for topsis we try vector normalizations, right. So, after your vector normalization process you get a value for suppose criteria C 1 for alternative A you get a value 0 0.447 you write it here. 
and then you calculate all these you know normalized values put in this table then let us go to the next. Now, here we put you remember that criteria uh, values or weightage we put different different weightage and we tried in previous example if you recall we had given same value once 0.25 and then different different values for criteria. So, here let us see that for different uh, values of criteria how things work. Now, we have this normalized matrix value. Now, for C 1 A for A technology using criteria 1 what is your ultimate non beneficial criteria value. Now, you get 0 0.0224 this is your value you put it here same way you calculate for all the values for all criteria and alternative you get this is a non beneficial set and here you get the beneficial set of values. Now, we go for the for topsis method we need v j plus and v j minus right means the best solutions and the worst solutions value to for both beneficial and non beneficial we have to calculate. Now, we have this value after we get v j which is maximum c j value and minimum c j value. Okay. So, these two you have to put on the table and then you go next. Here what happens is that we now multiply the weightage for jth criteria for ith alternative. So, now we multiply w j with q i j. Here you have these sets of values for non beneficial and beneficial. Now, we will go for D the ideal solution the best positive ideal solution negative ideal solution. Now, positive idea solution when i is 1 okay, i alternative is 1 then you get this is the value. So, you calculate you remember we discussed about how to calculate the d i values same this is the one for d i plus and for negative ideal solution this is the one. So, now let us come back again to this table. So, here you calculate and this value you are putting here under different criteria then you go for d i values you get d i values d i values for positive as well as negative. Now, finally, these values will be required to calculate your p i value and p i value finally, will give you the ranking. Okay. So, p i value goes here then on the basis of that finally, you get a ranking. Now, as I said that suppose you have the alternatives here 6 alternatives if you take away one alternatives or if you add one g then your entire this ranking will be exactly reversal. So, 4 will be here 3, 2, 5, 6, 1. So, the reversal of the ranking will take place this is one issue with topsis. Now, another MCDM method which uh, can be used at times is Kapras. Kapras stands for complex proportional assessment. Kapras is a single technique which considers ideal and ideal worst solution, okay. ideal and worst solution that you can imagine. So, this method assumes proportional dependency of the significance and utilize the degrees of available alternatives and those alternatives could be under mutually conflicting criteria means here suppose you will have a set of alternatives and these are the criteria in case of copras you could have that these criteria c1 c2 they could be mutually contrasting or mutually contradicting conflicting criteria. So, this is Kapras method is for more complicated decision making process right. 
So, the Kopras procedure begins with the calculation of the normalized decision matrix, same process like just previous one we discussed. You normalize the values again a and j alternatives and j criteria by some normalization. Okay? So, you will do again r i j which we carried out in the part 1 of this series of lectures. So, you will go for some normalization and here we are not going to have beneficial and non-beneficial criteria or differentiation in this process. All right. So, here again r i j as you know is the normalized value for j th criteria and i th alternative. The normalized matrix is multiplied by the weights to get the weighted normalized matrix. This we have discussed earlier. Now, the row sum of weighted normalized matrix is given as S i plus and S i minus for beneficial and non-beneficial criteria. Okay? So, here P is the number of beneficial criteria and Q is the number of non-beneficial criteria. Okay? Now, again we will go for example to understand it. So, in case of Copras, you can calculate the q i and u i through this equation. First, you go and calculate q i and then you calculate u i. This q i and u i will be required when we go for ranking through Copras method. Let us see that how actually it can be carried out. So, in case of example, you have uh, again C 1 and C 2 as non-beneficial, C 3 and C 4 as beneficial criteria, you have 6 alternatives, same example, then you have set of values here, then you try to calculate one by one step wise some uh, normalizations which is much easy, you just add up these things non-beneficial and you have beneficial. So, these are the uh, values, then you go for R i g calculation, R i g this is the formula x i j by x i z y is equal to 1 to n. So, here you calculate for each criteria okay, and then you go for next you give the different values weightage for criteria and then you calculate the criteria based alternative you know weightage you put it here. Then you go for once you get the r i j. So, then you go for your ranking. So, this is the value multiply with the criteria value, you get the r i j here. Okay? So, the r i j value you put it here in the table, once you get that then your ranking process comes easier. So, here then you will go for s i plus and s i minus which we already discussed in the earlier example and through this calculation you will get certain value and then you go for q i calculations and u i calculation. So, once your q i is there basically you already uh, reach towards the ranking, then from q i you calculate the u i as you saw here that this is the last step for Copras method. So, once u i is with you, you get the ranking clearly here. Okay? So, this is how step by step you calculate different index and then you finally, reach towards the ranking process. Okay. Ultimate goal of everything is to come with the ranking, ranking of your alternative technologies means which one you are going to use here, you will going to use A technology A that is the best you know solution you have in hand among the six alternative technologies. Next weight determination using principal component analysis, most of you have carried out during your research work PCA famously known as PCA principal component analysis. PCA is a basically a dimension reduction technique and it is widely used also for image processing technique in different branches of science, engineering mainly in environmental soil and all natural resources related study heavily used uh, this PCA to identify the sources, source identification 
is another aspect that PCA helps us. Also, it is used for regression model and it can be actually done using different statistical tool or you know programs, Minitab, MATLAB, R, SPSS, many, many way. In MCDM, the criteria weights determination using PCA was not very common. However, in some cases in uh, you know some people have used it in different forms to identify the weightage criteria. As you by now might have understood that getting the weightage for your alternative and criteria is one of the key exercise within multiple criteria decision analysis. So, that is what actually it helps. Same example if you see that how in case of PCA that you may try to do it. So, principal components here is the proportion of variables of the different principal component is P and uh, it can be determined by various software as I mentioned. So, in case of PCA you try to have PC 1, PC 2, PC 3 and PC 4, 4 uh, area where actually you go with factor loading processes. Okay. So, there we actually consider a certain i n value on the basis of that we consider whether we our PCA exercise or PCA result output is acceptable or not. So, again as I said that PCA is largely used for source identification and also for uh, different other analysis relationships between different factors kind of regressions, but not much for multiple criteria decision analysis. So, again for PCA also you have to identify or determine the weightage of your different P's and C's like P's are the proportion of the variables and then you have the C's which are actually your components. All right. Then you have different way of analyzing, I am not going to talk in detail about PCA. As I said that this is very common tool, many of you have been using it and also PCA is not a very preferred tool for MCDA, multiple criteria decision analysis, though there are few reports that people are using it. So, participants today we actually end uh, with this lecture the entire MCDA technique and how in different process that we calculate a different weightage and then how we normalize it for different methodology, different process. Some are little complicated, some are very simple. As I said that analytical hierarchical process is one which many of you would be required to use when you work in the field of natural resource management. Mm -hmm.